What's up party people? Hey, in this video, I just wanted to talk about what I did today. A lot of you guys asked me to do a vlog, like a daily vlog. I can't really do that every day, but today was kind of busy. So this morning I had to chair this trauma committee meeting. We have a peer review every month for each hospital that has a trauma program. You review cases, problems, issues with the system, problems with the cases and blah, blah, blah. So I did that. That was 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. And then I went and rounded 12 patients. 9 to 10, I was doing like notes and stuff, billing 10 to 11, returning emails, answering questions from you guys. 11 to 12, I had to go to another hospital for an operation. 12 to 1, we did a, we did a gallbladder. 1 to 2, I had another meeting, trauma meeting for a different hospital, talking about the systems and all that stuff. Two to three, did an x lap with a small bowel resection with my partner. Three to four, drove back to the other hospital. And then four to five, saw some new patients. Five to six, I actually waited around for my my case to go. During this whole time, like I was kind of coordinating this other operation that I may or may not do today, which was a splenectomy for spherocytosis. The patient had like gastric varices and was bleeding and they didn't know this medicine. When I say they, it's like the medicine docs called me and said, we think the patient's going to bleed again, that they're being, they're, you know, the, the, the gastric hemorrhage is more frequent now and she's a little older. We think that she should have the spleen out sooner than later talked to a couple other doctors about it because it was like another doctor's patient that I was covering. Talked to the radiologist. Radiologist thought that patient could have a balloon. So she had a splenal renal shunt and a balloon dilation of that shunt would help shunt the blood away from the gastric varices and then embolize the spleen at the same time instead of just taking the spleen out. It's a really bloody operation if you just try and take the spleen out. They got a lot of bunch of varices. So and she was older and so you don't want to like put her at risk. So if we can you stop the blood flow to the spleen so when you're taking it out it doesn't bleed as much and you also do the shunt thing so it takes the blood away from the spleen it also takes the blood away from the uh, gastric varices gastric varices are just big and large veins and they bleed really easily and really bad esophageal varices are notoriously dangerous they're usually alcoholics get them because they have cirrhosis of the liver and then they get this horrendous upper gi hemorrhage which is uh notoriously difficult to treat anyway this is a different problem but sort of similar the whole time I'm like driving and you know calling people and trying to coordinate every all the care and stuff like that 6 6 15 I did this laparoscopic license of adhesions 6 15 to 7 and then 7 we got another trauma patient <laughs> had to see that trauma patient look over some labs and everything else for everyone else and then I'm driving home still on call I'm, I'm on call for like Friday Saturday and then I start on call at another hospital Sunday and then I'm on call for the rest of the week until Friday. I think that Friday I leave for a conference. So that's my day. They're not always like that busy. I mean, it doesn't seem that busy when you just break it into hours like that. I also got my dad uh, an appointment with a cardiologist. <laughs> <laughs> they're like my mom's texting me my dad's texting me I need this appointment we can't get it blah 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 so I had to call my friend who's a cardiologist and say hey can you see him it was nice enough to do that also coordinated care with other doctors talked to a few other doctors during the course of the day internal medicine radiologist neurosurgeon of course anesthesiologist for my operative patients yeah so now I'm gonna go home and uh, cross my fingers I don't have to come back <laughs> So you gotta see the trauma patient before you leave. If a trauma comes in and you're not sure that you need to see it, because not oh, we, don't, we don't see everybody, we only see the level ones like right away. The level two, sometimes the ER guys take care of it, and then if it's not that big of a deal, then they just send them home. But if you go home, trauma patient, like I'm about to walk out the door and trauma comes in, I just go see him. Because then I, when I come home, they're like, and we order all the tests, they're like, oh, they got these problems, and I can just do the uh, admission from there. It's not that big of a deal from home. Okay, that's it, quick one. See you next one.